Ozarks Teen Challenge is a rehabilitation center that specializes in the treatment of addiction, defiance, and life-controlling issues amongst adolescent boys. Our mission is to facilitate life transformation by coming alongside families, providing quality Christ-centered programming for your son and your entire family. Since Ozarks Teen Challenge is a faith-based rehabilitation center, we know that lasting life change comes from developing a relationship with our Creator. Your son will enter an environment where he is given every opportunity to experience the love, grace, and freedom of Christ. I went through this program, and it's not somewhere you would want to send your daughter. You will have these leaders who prey on you when you come in at the time you are extremely vulnerable, coming from abuse or addiction. They tell you, you aren't right with God if you do not talk in tongues. Fundraise in extreme weather conditions. When you are fundraising and don't get the goal, the amount of money they want you to make, from the store you're fundraising at, then the leaders call and tell you to pray. And then if you're still not making the money, then they tell you your head's not in the right place with God. I am personally still dealing with the emotional abuse that came from this program. They made me believe that my relationship with God isn't that great because I didn't follow their ways of worship. Teen Challenge, a summer camp in the heart of the Ozarks for troubled boys, seeking to restore these teenagers to their original state through faith-based counseling and rehabilitation. While their advertising and message paints a hopeful picture, the camp is subject to a multitude of poor reviews on Google and other services, like Sarah's, which lead to a far more sinister story. In 2018, this school accepted and enrolled my son in their program. I paid for transport to this place from New Jersey, costing thousands, only to have them call me three days later, stating my son was manipulative and wanted to leave. The reason I'm saying it now is to make parents aware that they will refer your child to Agape boarding school. Testimonies like these are important to understanding the scope that camps and schools like these have. Which I found out in the past year have lawsuits for child abuse and neglect. The reviews of this place showed four to five stars, but do not be fooled. You can't go by that when it comes to boarding schools. As you look further into Teen Challenge, Agape Boarding School in Stockton, Missouri sticks out like a sore thumb. Like so many of the families that were referred to Agape by Teen Challenge, we were about to dive headfirst into an unknown world. This has been filed against the Agape Boarding School for at-risk boys in Missouri. This brings the total to 19 lawsuits alleging physical, emotional, and sexual abuse of students by Agape staff, as well as by other students. And they do a great job of brainwashing the parents as well. I stood there and looked at all the children, and I turned to my partner and I started crying. I said, they're not going to bring him in to me. And in fact, there was someone standing in front of me, and he placed his hands on my shoulders and looked me in the eye, and he was like, Mom and started crying, that's when I recognized my son. Agape the fatherly love of God for humans, as well as the reciprocal love of humans for God. Let's go through what we know so far. The former school doctor has been charged with 12 felony child sex crimes. Five employees have been charged with child abuse accusations. The school faces 19 civil lawsuits by former students over physical and sexual abuse. The former dean and founder Clemenson is on a potential human trafficking list. Agape received a court order to shut down on September 13th, 2022, because a staff member was placed on the state physical abuse registry. Despite all the allegations of abuse, the school was not shut down. Hello, you've reached the front office at Agape Boarding School. We're not in right now, but you can feel free to leave a message and we'll get back to you at our earliest convenience. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Hello, my name is uh, Jacob Tetlow, and I am a student. We reached out to Agape for an interview. They refused to respond. For their side of the story, we'll have to turn to their website and advertising. Hi, uh, my name is Gino Eastless. I'm an Agape uh, boarding school student. Uh, I was sent here 
about uh, almost four months ago. Uh, I was transported by uh, two transporters. My parents called them in so that they could take me here. Uh, I mean, I wasn't very happy when it first happened. You know, I woke up at 3 in the morning. There was two random guys standing in my room telling me to put some clothes on and uh, to get ready. And uh, I didn't really know what was going on, but my mom came up and told me it was going to be all right and that uh, I was going to get better. Uh, first got here, uh, I didn't really know what to think. It was, it was a really big school, actually. Uh, kind of freaked me out, didn't know what was going on. And uh, I, I mean, I got my intake, uh, got my head shaved, finally got my hair back after a while. <laughs> Gino is describing two common authoritarian tactics used by boarding school like Agape to control their students. First, Gino talked about how his head was shaved in his interview. This is a form of de-individuation. When everyone looks the same, we lose our sense of self and individuality. Second, the pickup. In reference to how students are transported to the school, this fear tactic is extremely similar to the pickup used by another boarding school called Alon. Alon was closed down in the 1970s for similar accusations as Agape, but the similarities don't end there. On their YouTube page, Agape features a boxing camp highlight reel, calling back to the fight circles at Alon. These fight circles were meant to instill fear in students and create a social hierarchy. No doctor or any other medical professional was there. The video didn't specify if a professional was there teaching the kids. A boxing match doesn't seem like the best idea. This boxing match does, however, make sense in the context of control in Agape. To prove that point, enter the buddy program. I told you, you can't talk to anybody. Get out and do push-ups. Griffey's 17-year-old buddy commanded. The buddy ordered Griffey to do 25 reps, then demanded 25 more when he pleaded that he couldn't. In their mind, it's not that I can't do it, it's that I'm not doing them. Griffey recalled. The buddy escorted Griffey to a 20-something staff member who took over. After the word gosh twice slipped from Griffey's mouth as his arms collapsed beneath him, the chaperone screamed in his face. Don't use my God's name in vain. Do more push-ups. He says the man pounced on him and began punching him in the face as students watched from their beds. This system is an integral part of Agape's approach. On their website, under the approach section, the buddy system is instituted in stage one. This, coupled with Griffey's testimony, speaks enormously to the legitimacy of the claim. Agape creates systems to institutionalize and control their students, and a byproduct of their control is the physical, sexual, and emotional abuse. Finally, to summarize the treatment that one is subject to at Agape, the testimony of Nicole Fernandez, who sent her son Corey to Agape. The way uh, my son was really struggling and um, spiraling out of control, and I was extremely scared for his future and his safety, so I started to look into the possibility of like therapy programs. Um, I, a broker actually had reached out to me um, and um, started to help me look for schools, and that broker actually turned out to be the actual recruiter for Agape. But when you get there to the uh, first visit, they sit you in a room for four hours just kind of given it to you before you're ever even allowed to see your children um, and beating it into your head that you know you will fail your children if you don't take them if you take them out of the program um, so then four hours later when my son walked in um, he was filthy shaped head scrawny um, discolored he was kind of gray and, and blue looking a little bit the entire time we're with the visit though you have staff all around you don't get a chance to really talk to your child in low and room private. Anytime you do, uh, they're under the brainwashing still and they're telling you like, oh yeah, mom, I exercise all the time. And at the time I didn't realize that the exercises were actually extreme all day long and used as forms of punishment. He can't forget the blood curdling screams and from the padded palace, a carpet covered room where staff allegedly threw kids around like rag dolls. 
This is what Nicole said when asked if the school had any lasting effects on her son. Arguably, the most deplorable part of this whole story is the injustice. Agape has been open for 32 years now, under the same management till 2021. The management only changed after founder James Clemenson died, avoiding all responsibilities and any form of justice as well. The following is a list of charges against staff at Agape in an upcoming case. 